Rumour has it there are three crucial settings that some R5 and R6 owners are still unaware of. Today we'll look into those in detail. So let's look into that. Hi, I'm Tom and you're watching Rumour Has It. Please subscribe for camera information, news and rumour. Remember, your likes below help the channel grow. I still see these questions being raised on Facebook forums and elsewhere, which tells me that these settings are not widely known by all owners. So I thought today I'd cover the three lesser known settings, which I hope will increase the usability of your camera. Just a point of information here, if you find the video is too quick to follow or too slow, you can alter the YouTube playback speed to suit your preferred speed. The first setting we'll cover today is the one button which allows you to enter video mode speedily. The second shows how to reduce the chances of overheating even in photography mode. And the third will cover focusing and fast switching between modes. Let's say you're out taking photographs and suddenly something happens that you want to video. Currently you have to press the mode button and then the info button, select the video mode and then press the mode button again. Many users long for a simple switch on the back like we had with the 5D which allowed you to switch between video and photography mode. This was direct, quick and time saving which is essential for those important moments where seconds can count. Well actually there is a way on the R5 and it involves the MFN button. This is the only button that has an option to reprogram for video mode selection. To do this we need to enter the custom button menu by entering customization section. That's the orange section which is six icons along. You then come to page 3 on that menu and you scroll down to where it says custom buttons. Enter the options and scroll down to where you see the MFN button and change that to still and movie switching. Now you can instantly switch between stills and video with the touch of a button and you can easily access the red switch to start video and the shutter button to take photographs, all within reach of your forefinger. The second setting is again to do with video. It's important to know that the R5 keeps itself in readiness to enter video mode and the default mode for video is the setting stored under video C3 mode. If the C3 mode is inadvertently left set to a potentially overheating mode like 8K or 4K HQ or even 4K 120, then you increase the chances of the camera overheating even in stills mode. To avoid this, go into video mode and change it to C3 and in that setting make sure and set the video mode to full HD 24. This means the camera's state of readiness in C3 is in on overheating mode. This is important because some users have reported that camera will overheat even in photography mode and that can only happen if the video mode is set to over an overheating mode. And the third setting we'll cover is a focus setting to give you speedy access to the option between eye autofocus and small spot or whatever your favoured AF mode is. This method is often called dual back button focus, but there's a twist here. I'm actually going to show you three button focus. To do this, again we enter the orange customization settings. And the first button to program is the shutter button. So we come down to customize buttons again, and in the shutter button, we set this to metering start only. Then we come down to the AF on button and we set this to metering start and AF start. Then we come down to the start button 
Let me set that to eye detection, NAF. Then we come down to the AF point button. And we set that to direct AF method selection. Now when we press this button, it will cycle through all the AF methods available to the camera. If you never use some of the available AF methods, you can limit the available methods to only those you like. And to do this, we go to the Plum menu, which is the second icon along, then to page 4, and we scroll down to Limit AF Methods. Now, personally, I deselect Eye Autofocus because pressing the Start button now enters Eye Autofocus regardless of what you limit in here. So I deselect Eye Autofocus, I keep Small Spot, and then the two expanded areas. The camera automatically selects the large spot, the large square. You can't change that. And I deselect the uh, range methods because I don't use those. This setup allows me instant access to autofocus, spot mode, or eye autofocus. And you can see the camera switching between those now. And in the third button, I can change the autofocus mode I'm using by cycling through them. And that's limited by this, the methods I left ticked. I don't bother with the zone areas because I find the animal IAF. The AF will find the bird or animal as long as it appears in the frame. And when there's an eye, it finds the eye. And when it loses the eye, it finds the body. And it will track it just the same. I realise back button focusing isn't for everyone. But if you switch between focus methods a lot, this method gives far superior control over the focus method that you want to or need to use. And you can easily switch instantly between them with just a slight adjustment of the thumb position. For instance, if I'm photographing a bird and it goes into deep cover, too deep for animal eye to find, I can instantly slide my thumb over and select the small point to be more precise about where the focus point is placed. I can also use the joystick to move the focus point about in the frame, enabling me to compose the shot. Bear in mind that using the AF on button also allows you to either fix your focus by pressing and releasing. This will allow you to recompose the shot without altering focus. Or keep the AF on button depressed to track focus and objects. This obviously requires you to be in servo mode. This setup means I have total control over my focus points with my right thumb between the joystick, AF on button, IAF and AF method select. Now can I ask you to take a look at the two videos on screen. To my left is my last upload prior to this and on my right is what YouTube thinks you might be interested in. Take a look and let me know what one suits you best. Thanks for watching, Rumour Has It. I hope you found this useful. Please like, and if you're new here, click the subscribe button below. It really helps the channel grow. And for my part, I'll continue to bring you camera information, news, and rumour.